Up till now, we've basically articulated Newton's law of, of motion for rotations. We've said that torque equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, which is helpful if you could tell me how much torque you're applying, and I could tell you what the moment of inertia of the object is that you're trying to torque. I could tell you then how much angular acceleration would result. But we haven't yet really talked about how to calculate anything on the left side of this equation. How do you actually calculate how much torque you're applying? To do this, we have to remember something. We have to remember that torque is equal to the cross product, the vector cross product of R cross F. So that means if we know uh, how much force we're applying, and we know the distance from the pivot that we're trying to apply that force, and the angle between the, the pivot direction and the, and the force direction, at angle theta, we can actually calculate a, a torque. The magnitude of the torque is r times f times the sine of the angle between those two vectors. So the torque grows bigger when, when you try to pull with a force at a large radius. You get more leverage when you're trying to twist or turn something. It also matters what the angle is between the applied force and the pivot. So let's try to think of some concrete examples. The one that comes to mind first for me is just trying to use a wrench to turn a bolt. So the the vector r here points from the center of the bolt out toward the edge of the wrench where you're going to be uh, working with your hands applying a force. So here's a dumb thing to do with a wrench and you don't need a physics class to tell you this. If you pull away from the, the bolt with the wrench you're not going to apply any torque at all. In fact the wrench will just come off the bolt. In physics language we would say well then the angle between the radius vector and the force vector is zero because they're parallel and as a result, the expression for torque, which is r times f times sine of theta, will be zero. Both r and f are not zero, but the angle theta is zero, and so sine of theta will be zero. This would not be a very good way to operate a wrench. A smarter way is to think about, uh, again, pulling on the end of the wrench, but not at an angle of zero, but rather off to the side a little bit. And we all know that when you pull with a wrench, pull on a wrench with a, on a bolt, you'd actually pull to the side as hard as you could uh, with an angle more like 90 degrees where that torque becomes maximal. So it's important to, whenever you're trying to construct a numerical value for the torque that's being applied, know what is the distance between the pivot point, the point of rotation, and where your force is being pulled, and then know about the force, and then know about the angle between those two things. In this case, we need to know three separate quantities in order to calculate torque.